I think the nine to five is fucking cruel. I think it's something that humanity will look back to at some point and wonder how we did this to ourselves and to each other. I think that it's especially cruel towards people who are creative and spiritual or have these kinds of inclinations. Um, I know some people are going to get sensitive about this and be like, well, that's just the way things are supposed to be. And you're exaggerating. It's not like that. And I want to preface this by saying that I don't think that all nine to five is bad. I am saying that the fact that most people have to work nine to five in order to barely afford living while at the same time wanting to have some sort of creative expression or some sort of meaningful thing built on the side and having to or trying to create that while working nine to five, as well as also managing their entire life is freaking absurd. Working nine to five not only takes half of your waking hours, but it takes your prime hours. I mean, think about it. Nine to five is the time that the sun is shining. Most people have the most energy. Birds are singing. This is the time you're supposed to be out there in nature, enjoying your life, actually living, you know, spending your time with your kids if you have them or pets or loved ones, working on things that make you feel alive, working on things that bring you joy, actually living. And of course, there's got to be some time spent working, i.e. creating some sort of value in order to make money. I mean, if you're part of a community, you have to contribute something, right? You can't just sit there and expect things to be handed to you. But we're living on a planet that belongs to us and where we're supposed to live on it for free. And when you think about what it actually takes to live or to survive, at least on a physical level, it doesn't, it shouldn't take that much time and energy and certainly shouldn't take us sitting behind computer screens in unnatural environments that aren't really joyful, doing things that aren't really meaningful, talking to people we don't want to talk to, doing things that are not feeling right most of the time and really trading most of our life in order to just barely afford to live nowadays because of the cost of living. So to me, this gaslighting of like, well, yeah, you know, build your business on the side or build your business on whatever on the weekends and stuff. It works if all you're doing is you're following some sort of blueprint to build like a drop shipping business or something. But if you're a creative or a spiritual or you have to create something that is it requires of you to be in a, the right state of mind or the right state of consciousness. Uh, it's not that simple because most of that work is not work that you can do in small pockets of time. Like you're not going to sit and write your best writing in 15 minutes of interrupted work, 15 minutes here, five minutes here, 10 minutes there. And it's not impossible. Of course not. Like when you look at people who have created masterpieces while also holding this kind of nine to five lifestyle, which many have existed throughout history. And actually back in, in those days, they worked even longer longer hours, they were able to do it, but it wasn't as simple as just start doing it. It's not like you just put it on your to-do list, create great content, write great writing. Like that's not how it works. You know, it requires of you to really to summon some God levels of focus, energy, and faith, especially because you're hoping that the thing that you're creating is going to lead you somewhere um, and that it's going to work. So you have to have faith, but you also have to have a lot of focus, a lot of energy, and you have to be a master at managing your own energy because it's not just about time. It's also about energy. When you're working nine to five, what happens is that it's taken over your prime hours, like I said. So then when are you going to create? You're going to create before work, after work, and on the weekends. So you have to be able to re-energize yourself because the truth is you get out of work and you're spent and you don't have any energy left or you first wake up in the morning in that time when you're having to get ready to go to work, you also don't necessarily have a lot of energy, especially if you have a complex life, other people to take care of and that sort of thing. So you have to become a master at really force creating time and space and then managing your energy in that time. So when I work with my clients, I give them 90 minutes sessions. The 90 minute sessions are pocket of time that is a non-negotiable where you're going to work on your thing no matter what. And I recommend usually doing this first thing in the morning before the day starts. So that means making some sacrifices. Like if you're used to watching things late at night, I know, I know you finish work, you're tired, you just want to park in front of Netflix and watch something. I get it. Believe me, I know. I know, but you have to resist that need to distract yourself or to numb away the pain 
to go to sleep, to do the thing that is good for you, for your health, so that you can wake up the next morning with a little bit more energy, so that you can wake up early and still feel okay to put yourself in a state where you can do a little bit of work. I know it's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. And it is possible. When you do it this way, it is possible. So the method or the protocol, if you will, is a two-hour session of which the first 30 minutes is for you to stay in silence and rest and really let your mind settle. And then the next 90 minutes is 90 minutes spent on your creative work. And like I said, this kind of work requires that you carve out the time for it because it's not going to happen just like that. It's not a task that you just get done on your to-do list. You have to put yourself in a space and stop doing it, whether or not you feel like it, even though in the beginning it's not going to show you much at all, but you just start. So if your thing is writing, you sit down and you write. And at first it's going to not feel very good. Maybe you're not going to get into it. It's going to take a minute before you start up, but eventually you will get to a point where you'll, you'll enter this state of flow where you'll feel like, okay, I got this. And then you keep going. The key is to not letting anything distract you. You have to make sure that that time is protected and it's completely 100% dedicated to your thing. It's not time to do that. And also at the same time, check your emails and also check your social media and other things. Leave those things for later, but you have to force create that time for your creative or um, spiritual creative endeavor, as I like to call it, which is anytime you are creating something from a connection to yourself, that's what spiritual creativity is. So this is the, the, the most important thing is that you've got to really accept the, the reality of how this is. Stop gaslighting yourself. Stop blaming yourself. Also stop taking that as a disempowering excuse. Like, I don't want you going on either one of the two extremes. Don't think, oh, I'm doomed and it's because I am so busy. I can't do it. I don't really have the time. If I can't do all of it, then I can't do none of it. That's wrong. It's like thinking like that is going to keep you stuck. But also you don't want to be on the other end of the spectrum where you're like, I don't understand why I haven't written my masterpiece or I haven't created my masterpiece or I haven't, you know, built this gigantic empire of a business while I have all these things happening, you know, in my life. So start where you are and build from there. The biggest thing I can tell you that I have learned that I know, I know about every single person who has made this work in their lives is I know you've got to temporarily limit your own freedom in order to be free. Freedom is like happiness. The more you pursue it, the more it runs away from you. If you want to be free, you have to be okay with letting go, if you will, of your own freedom temporarily. Think of it this way. If you don't do that, if you don't schedule your creation time and you don't force yourself to stick to a schedule and you want to keep living in that fantasy of ease and flow, I, you know, if you've got like a bunch of people to delegate the work to, or if your business is already running by itself because you built it already, you built the systems and processes around it. So it kind of like carries itself. But when you're just starting out, when you're a solopreneur, trust me, and especially when you have a whole life next to that, like you can do the whole ease and easy schedule. You know, I create whenever I feel like it, you know, I'll just wait for divine inspiration. You can do that. But how is that working for you so far? Like, how is it going for you so far? If you're being honest with yourself, you'll see that that doesn't actually really work. And so this fantasy that you're just going to sit there and wait for the muse to scratch your butt and like tell you what to create, is not going to freaking happen when you are so stressed out and overwhelmed with so many things happening in your, in your life. So be honest with yourself, you know, and that works if you have an open day, an open schedule and nothing else going on. But if you have a real life and you don't have that system, that support system of all these people to take care of your things and do things for you and you're just starting the business and you kind of have to like push almost not almost but really push you know up a hill that's what it feel, feels like in the beginning and then you have to restrict yourself you have to have a schedule and say this is when I'm going to create and be strict with yourself and it doesn't feel very great I get that but that's what it requires it requires a little bit of structure where you can just sit down and do the work during this time and whatever happens, happens. And that strengthens your creative muscle. That uh, exposes you to that fear, to that. Like, so it doesn't become this scary thing where 
every time you sit down to create, you have to do some amazing work. You have to get the inspiration. It has to be an excellent piece because you only create once a month or something. But if you make it a daily thing or a habitual thing where you create all the time, regardless, like this is my job. I'm a creator and this is what a creator does. A creator creates. So I create. If you're a writer, you write. If you're a designer, you design whatever it is and it doesn't have to be one thing but you know you have to like strengthen this muscle because if you don't do that then it becomes this scary thing that you put on a freaking pedestal and it shouldn't be that way but if you restrict your own freedom if you allow yourself to give up your freedom to yourself temporarily you will have true freedom but if you keep resisting this idea and you keep thinking well, no, I don't. I don't want to have a schedule. I, I'm I'm my own boss. I have my own business, so therefore, I should be. I should not have a schedule at all. I should not be tied to a certain time to do certain things. Things will go to shit, and at some point, you will have to go work for somebody else, and that person will set a schedule for you. That's not bad. Sometimes that's what we need. Sometimes that that's what we need when we when we haven't been able to lead ourselves to do this life will put us in a situation where we need to do that. And, and that's why a lot of times you find when your schedule is actually filled with things, you are more productive, right? Because you have no choice. You have to work in this pocket of time because that's the only time that's available to you. So sometimes that restriction is really good. But wouldn't it be nice if you just do that for yourself, by yourself, and accept that, that is, that's going to have to go away for some time so that you can create more permanent freedom. The other thing I want to talk to you about is to stop putting a band-aid on it. Like stop distracting yourself from the pain of not creating your life's work, your soul's work. I just, I know so many people who try to convince themselves like, yeah, I'm not doing the thing that I want to do right now. I'm not really pursuing the thing that I want to pursue right now, but that's okay. Eventually I'll get to it, et cetera, et cetera. And they tell me this, like I recently just received a message from a dear person and, and he said to me, you know, I'm really busy. I'm working, I'm out of the my house 50 hours a week. And so I don't have time. I don't have the energy. I don't have the clarity or the direction for a creative outlet or a creative expression, but I am so tired. So like what I do is I go on TikTok and I just watch a bunch of videos as a distraction. He recognizes that he has the awareness that this is what it is, but like sit with the pain, like let yourself feel how shitty it is. It's okay. Like stop being afraid of feeling the pain of how crappy it is to 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 be in that situation you can still be grateful for what you got it doesn't mean that your life is terrible there's nothing wrong with your life but also you feel the pain of not allowing yourself to express yourself fully let yourself feel that pain stop being afraid of the pain it's there for a good reason listen to it sit with it I promise you, if you sit with the pain, eventually one of two things will happen. Either you'll realize, oh, this is not actually important enough to me. So that's okay. I don't need to feel pain. And it's fine. I don't have to even distract myself. Or you'll realize, fuck no. Like there's no way I could live my life without at least giving myself a chance. I need to trust myself that this is the path that I want to take. This is what my heart is telling me, like what I want to create in my life. And so I'm going to do whatever it takes. If, if there is a 1% chance that this will work out, I'm going to pursue it. And listen, it's not even about that. Like, why is it that we think that a creative outlet or self-expression has to be about making money? I'm not in the business of telling people how to become trillionaires. Like, that's not what I'm here to do, even though I'm a marketer by trade. But at the end of the day, what I care about is that you have some form of creative expression or self-expression and that you have the patience, you develop the patience, the humility, the everything that is required to build that over a lifetime. For some people, it happens fairly quickly. For other people, it takes a while. I don't pretend to know how long it takes a person to have those results. But I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, even if, even if, you're not making a living out of the thing that you love. It is so worth it to pursue it. It is so worth it to make that part of your daily life. It will add so much meaning to your life. It'll add so much joy, so much passion, so, so much depth, so much beauty to your life. It will, it will help you see yourself in a completely different way. It'll help you relate to life in a completely different way. And you are so much more likely 
to make it into your main source of income if you at least try than if you were to just sit in your head and be, and be like, well, I don't know, you know, how that's going to happen or how that's going to work. So I guess it's not worth it or I'll get to it later. There is no later your life is not going to get easier. You know, you're not going to wake up one day and have everything suddenly like lined up. You have to start wherever you are. So start here and now. I promise you it is so worth it from the very first moment that you decide to walk this path. So this is my message to you today. Wherever you are, if you are in a full-time job or you're in your own business, but you don't feel really aligned with your business, you realize that you've picked the wrong career or you picked the right career, but you've outgrown it. And there's something else you wish to spend your time doing, but you don't know how to connect it to making money. Please, 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 please allow yourself to do it regardless. Like force create the time to do it, work on your craft, do whatever it takes to make it a practice in your everyday life. Get good at it for you first, for your soul, to nourish your soul first. Make it your soul's work. And who knows, maybe at some point you'll be able to find an intersection between that and what the market is willing to spend money on. And if you ever find that you would like some support from somebody who's walking the same path and who has that marketing experience and who understands what it's like, the creation of something from the heart and what that requires and how that is, how different that is really from typical business or typical marketing uh, advice, I'm more than happy to to support you on, on your journey. So with that, um, oh, by the way, I have something for you. Go to whatever you're watching this. There is a link at the bottom for a mini course that I recently created, which is a sample from my program, Brand to Full Self-Expression. I've taken a module out of it called Brand Essence, and it's going to help you define you know, your brand, define your, your brand's gift. What is it that you're here to create? There's some exercises there and things that will hopefully give you some clarity and reconnect you to this thing. Because I really believe that if you connect to it, if you connect to the spirit of your brand, if, if you connect to the vision that you have, that you know you want to create, once you get connected to that, it is, it's going, you're going to be unstoppable. You're going to be uh, you know, you're going to be so much more likely to get over the fears because that desire is going to be that much stronger. So go use it. It's free, by the way. So go do that and let me know what you think. And I hope this video helps someone and convinces you to uh, to pursue your um, your thing, your dream, your vision, whatever it may be. All right. Take care. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.